Hello, my name is Mayor Emmett and I'm a technical marketing director here at Cloudflare. In this video, I'm going to walk through some of the basics of Web3 before going into details of Cloudflare Web3 gateways. First, let's talk about the current challenges and what Web3 is exactly. So, if we look at the current web model, first there's centralization. Applications and data are centralized and controlled by a single authority where there's reliance on accessing that application and data. And in terms of durability, if that server were to go offline, the respective content and data disappears from the web. We've all been there before, bookmarking a site, going back to it several months later, and it's gone. Further, users have to provide explicit trust. I'm sure you've had the experience of finding a great site, offering discounts or a great service, but had to then go and do additional research to determine if that site was legit and could be trusted. Also, for verification of transaction and history, there's dependency on the central authority and their systems, which may not be transparent. And today, with location-based addressing, when we access a site or download a file, there's no assurance that what we receive is actually what we intended to receive. For example, an application or data could have been hacked and tampered with. Also, applications become siloed in specific provider environments, along with all the user data they harvest and collect. For data being stored and accessed on web servers, multiple files with the same content can exist, creating duplication. And if a file is updated, that entire file has to be uploaded again. And finally, the content being accessed is centralized and not necessarily close to end users. Additionally, when users download data, there's a one-to-one -one relationship and performance dependency between client and server. Okay, so what is Web3? So Web3 can be seen as a collection of technologies focused on a new iteration of the web incorporating inherent aspects of decentralization. So moving from a centralized model such as server host centric model to a more decentralized distributed model like a P2P network, also not controlled by a single authority. Trustlessness. So moving from an explicit trust model to a trustless model where obtaining data or using an app does not require explicit trust of an authority. Verification, so providing for inherent verification of data and transactions. Immutability, so inherent immutability to prevent tamper, tampering of data, transactions, and applications. And transparency, data and application logic should be transparent to the user. Execution and result is determined by code without intervention of any entity. Now, this is still a fairly new and continuously evolving space where there's still a lot of innovation to come. But some of the use cases we've seen in this space are digital money, DeFi, lending, NFTs, digital marketplaces, places, uh, compliance auditing, ownership tracking, and so on. So now that we have some ideas of what Web3 is, I'm going to talk briefly about two specific Web3 technologies before discussing what services Cloudflare is providing around these. First, there's Interplanetary File System, or IPFS, a decentralized storage layer for Web3, and correspondingly, Ethereum, a decentralized compute layer for Web3. And both have these two important Web3 tenants of decentralization via leveraging P2P networking and inherent verification via cryptographic hashing. Now, these are much broader topics that can't be covered in detail in this short video. I'm going to briefly touch upon them for the purposes of providing some context. If you want more details, check out the Cloudflare IPFS Gateway and Cloudflare Ethereum Gateway white papers. So starting with IPFS, this is a protocol and peer-to-peer -peer distributed network for storing and sharing data. The nodes within an IPFS network contribute to a distributed file system. And the core tenets of IPFS are there's no central entity responsible for storing and serving web content, and it's a trustless model where immutability and verification are implicitly built in. Going into a bit more detail here, we have an IPFS network with multiple nodes. We add a file to IPFS. When we add the file, IPFS creates a hash of the file or a content identifier. When a user requests the content using a SID, they always know what they intended to receive is actually what they receive because the hashes or content identifiers match. If the 
file is changed, uh, a new object gets created with a different SID. So what are the benefits of IPFS? Well, first we move to a decentralized model, increasing durability where any node on the P2P network can serve the content. Second, we have inherent trust in verification where we use content-based addressing where the unique hash or content identifier ensures what we receive is what we intended to receive. Data is not siloed behind specific providers. Instead, data is free on the IPFS network and any interface can be built to access that data. Locality and performance. With IPFS, there are many nodes on the decentralized network that can be close to users. Additionally, when downloading files, parts of the files can be downloaded from different nodes simultaneously. Think of uh, BitTorrent or in the old days, uh, if you remember Napster here. And finally, there's some inherent deduplication where each object added to IPFS has a unique hash and there can be no duplication. Also, there's some block level de duplication. When a file is updated, IPFS only needs to add the changed blocks. Okay, so moving on to Ethereum quickly. We covered IPFS for decentralized storage and now we're going to briefly cover Ethereum for decentralized compute. Ethereum is a decentralized open source programmable blockchain. It's a distributed database that stores data and blocks that are ultimately linked together using cryptography, thus making verification easy and transparent. And the core tenets of Ethereum are there's no central authority to explicitly trust, independence from any central authority and transparency of app behavior, transactions and result. And it's a trustless model where immutability and verification are implicitly built in. Going into a bit more detail here, we have an Ethereum network with multiple nodes. Ethereum blockchain is running on these decentralized nodes. This blockchain consists of multiple blocks, and these blocks each have multiple transactions which are executed by nodes. Each transaction has a unique cache, and each block where transactions are grouped together also has a unique cache. What helps provide immutability is that each block has a hash, but also has a hash of the prior block basically creating a chain of blocks cryptographically hashed together. Any attempted change would require all subsequent blocks to be changed, requiring a lot of work and agreement on state. Now, Ethereum was the first programmable blockchain in the sense that users could deploy applications on them. There's been others since, but Ethereum was the first to do this. These applications are called smart contracts and can be written in different languages, the most popular being Solidity. Now, as the application is deployed on blockchain, it inherently becomes decentralized as well and referred to as decentralized app or dApp. So what are the benefits of Ethereum? Again, we moved a decentralized model, increasing availability, where if any node is down, the application can be accessed via any other node. There's inherent trustlessness, where you don't have to trust a central authority. The application is deployed on blockchain and behavior and results are deterministic defined by the contract code. All transactions in history can be easily verified on the blockchain. The applications, data, and transactions are immutable, unlike in the current model where a server can be hacked and application data modified and tampered with. And finally, transparency, where the application code with deterministic behavior is deployed on the blockchain and visible for everyone to see. So now that we have some understanding of what these technologies are, what's Cloudflare doing in this space? We're providing easy access to Web3 technologies, IPFS for distributed storage layer for Web3 and Ethereum for distributed compute layer for Web3. And really you can see that us as providing a bridge between Web 2.0 and Web 3 via these Cloudflare Web 3 gateways. Now, IPFS and Ethereum have their own protocols and networks, and to be able to use or develop on them, users need to deploy and manage their own IPFS and Ethereum nodes. We're basically becoming that Web 3 infrastructure provider and deploying IPFS and Ethereum nodes on the Cloudflare network and giving easy access via an HTTP interface. And this provides multiple benefits. Ease of access to IPFS Ethereum networks via HTTP. Security, IPFS Ethereum nodes are secured by Cloudflare. No maintenance or monitoring, no need to maintain and monitor nodes. Reliability, benefit from Cloudflare's robust and reliable platform. 
and performance, Cloudflare, Anycast Network, and caching is leveraged. And Cloudflare data centers are across 100 plus countries, reaching 95% of the internet connected population globally within 50 milliseconds. So what's Cloudflare IPFS gateway providing? Well, customers can easily access content on the IPFS network without having to deploy and secure their own IPFS nodes. IPFS supports using DNS to map easy to remember names to IPFS content. DNS uh, link is the protocol used to do so and Cloudflare supports DNS link, allowing customers to serve IPFS content through their domain names. When using the Cloudflare IPFS gateway, customers get the additional benefit of using the Cloudflare CDN, which can cache IPFS content close to users, increasing overall performance. Also, customers can use IPFS gateway and manage their full security model and additional Cloudflare reliability and performance capability through a single pane of glass. Quick view of how IPFS gateway works here. VI Cloudflare's global Anycast network incoming HTTP request is sent to the closest data center to the user. An app on the worker's serverless platform receives the request and checks the local cache. If IPFS content is cached, it's returned, else workers makes a HTTP request via workers API to IPFS nodes on the Cloudflare network to check if they have the content. If content is cached, it's returned to workers and respectively to the client. IPFS nodes on the Cloudflare network are peering with the public IPFS network and can access it as needed as well. Moving on to Cloudflare Ethereum Gateway and what it provides. Again, customers can easily access the Ethereum network without having to deploy and secure their own Ethereum nodes. Cloudflare Ethereum Gateway allows for customers using their own domain names. So JSON RPC queries over HTTP can be sent to a custom domain name. And as before, when using the Cloudflare Ethereum Gateway, customers get the additional benefit of using the Cloudflare CDN, which can cache results for content close to users, increasing overall performance. And similar to IPFS, customers can use Ethereum Gateway and manage their full security model and additional Cloudflare reliability and performance capabilities through a single pane of glass. Quick view of how Ethereum Gateway works here. VI Cloudflare's global Anycast network, incoming JSON RPC API call over HTTP is sent to closest data center to the user. An app on the worker's serverless platform receives the request and if it's a read operation, checks the local cache and returns result if found. If content is not cached, workers will make an API call to Ethereum nodes on the Cloudflare network to retrieve the data and return to workers and client respectively. Now, if workers receive the right operation, workers will make an API call to Ethereum nodes on the Cloudflare network. Ethereum nodes on the Cloudflare network are also peering with the public Ethereum network as well and can access it as needed. I hope you found this walkthrough informational and useful. For additional details, make sure to check out the Cloudflare Web3 Gateways product page and the IPFS Gateway and Ethereum Gateway white papers.